Okay. So we are doing what is called an acrylic monoprint. I've done a little example here. It doesn't give you a perfect painting, okay? So why do you think we do this, and this is just the middle of my face, why do you think we do a monoprint first? What's it going to save time with? What's it going to help with, Bella? It's not for practice, no. Yeah. Yeah, so one, it's teaching you to paint the tones very specifically. It doesn't come out perfectly because of the process. But it's also, it's teaching you to see those separate tones. But it also gets all your features in exactly the right place. I mean, my eyes, they need a bit of work. But I know that that's where my eyes are. They're in the right place. And that's what we want. Because one of the hard things with portraiture is if you get the proportions wrong. And the most common mistake is people put the eyes too high and make this part of the face too long and you know we don't want you to have to battle against those when we try and teach you how to paint tone and form okay which is really what this is about so I'm going to show you quickly how to do this I have photocopied all your um, portraits and mirrored them the reason we mirror them is because as you can see you know once you've got a monoprint it flips it over and so when your um, portrait is on its piece of paper it will be in the same orientation as they are on the wall last year we forgot that step everyone did their monoprint and they were like my face is facing the wrong way so this year we've got that right I've set it up like this and I'll put a photo of this on school box. What you need to do before you start this is make sure you've got your various tones of paint. So mix, can you remember the process was mix a big puddle of the sort of mid skin tone and then go your lighter tones here. I've got one, two, three lighter tones and one, two, three darker tones. Um, so mix those tones beforehand always when you're painting your portraits have this very structured layout have your palette with the colors that you need have your ready mixed pools of color keep them separate i mean you can see in here i've gone and mixed a bit of that and that and got a mid-tone but start with keeping them separate because if you do that your life is going to be easier and you mix enough for that lesson um, what I'm going to do to make it easier for you to start this time is I bought some skin tone light. So this is our mid skin tone, which you can start with, which on my plate is over there. And then I've added, you know, a little bit of this and that and that to, dark, uh, to darken it. Much more of that, a little bit of blue to go darker. And this one is just blue and black and a bit of red. So you want to mix those tones, but we'll start off with this just so that we don't spend the whole double trying to get the tones right. Obviously, Mahir, Trish, who else has some orange skin tone? To this, what you will want to add is um, probably just for your mid tone, probably a bit of that and a bit of that yellow so that your mid tone starts off with a little bit more of a yellowy tone okay so i'll put this photo on school box so that you know you're set up all the time now to do the monoprint you're going to do the monoprint you've got your place you're going to put your acetate sheet over the top um what's this called masking tape over the top and then you're just going to paint the tones on there, but you first have to prepare the ground. So you all remember kale gel medium on a separate little acetate and get a roller. And you are going to roll the clear gel medium on there. What's gonna happen if you put too much on is that when you go to print it, 
it's going to all squelch and everything's going to bleed into each other. So you really do just need a thin layer rolled on, but obviously you don't want it so thin that it dries. So if I have a look at that, I think that's enough. So, and the thing is, if it, if it looks like it's dry, you can always spray a bit of water on the paper. So you've got the clear gel medium on and then you are going to start painting. I like to start, and I don't know why, I was trying to figure out why I like to start with the dark tones first. Um, so you can see here, just because I've used, I did a little test print. And I'm not going black dark or dark, you know, I'm not going the darkest dark because I want to leave some other darks to put in but I do want to have a darker tone. So that's going to be my darkest tone. And I'm going to, first up, paint on here. Now, you've got to be sort of gentle, I guess, with the way you put it on because you're painting onto wet, but you also have to be quite, quite quick. So you're going to paint in your dark tones. If I paint over a little bit of a light, is that, the end, is, is that a problem? It's not really because this isn't the finished product, is it? I'm just trying to block in my basics. Now, I'm not going to paint the whole thing because, let's face it, there's nothing as boring as watching paint dry and also we'll just start off. So I've got my dark of my hair. When I want to paint the dark of my eyes, and I'm going to advise you not to keep swapping brushes, I'm just going to use the edge of this to put in where those darks are. Sometimes I'll just put it on the corner of my brush to paint the eyeball. And I want to indicate where these darks are as accurately as possible, but not getting hung up on, you know, really details that I can put in later. So where else do I see darks on my nostrils? Be careful when you're painting those that you don't just put a big blob on. Try and keep your scale the same. Obviously, you can't rest your hand on the acetate because, um, see, I really find it hard to paint and talk. You can't rest your hand on the acetate because it's got that... Um, I'm going to just paint the edge of my face there. It's got the medium on, okay? And you'll see when you're painting it on the medium that sometimes it comes out thinner than... I'm just going to put the boundaries of my face in just so that we can see that. Okay, so I think that is... Oh, no, that's not all the darks. The midline of the lip, if you can get that right, or at least as right as possible with your dark, that's a great one for setting, setting you up. Now, I'm not going to rinse my brush because I don't want things to get really watery. So if you've all got some, what is this called, newsprint underneath, use that. So now I'm going to go on to my next one, and I know I've got a little bit of that light. Oh, that's too thick. If you put the paint on too thick, like I did there, it's just when you print it going to squash out. So be careful of that, but you don't want to put it on too thin. You want enough so that it will print. Um, next tone is some of, don't have so much on your brush, Mrs. Burgess. And you're trying to get it in the right spots, but you're not getting too hung up on... Oh, that's my phone. Okay, I think, I think that's all of that tone. Oh, clean the brush. Now I'm going on to this one, which there's a lot of, okay? So now I'm going to go and put this tone in. And again, I am thinking about the form that I'm painting, but I'm not getting hung up if it's not perfect. So for those perfectionists among us, put your hands up. You have to, for this stage, work quite quickly. You can still be particular, 
but you're not going for this perfect thing. It is going to look a little bit patchy, but that's okay because this is just like a placement thing. Which color am I on? This one, sorry. Um, so you're going to put those in. I love this bit on the nose, that little bit of dark tone there. In the white of the eye, which is interesting because it's not the lightest tone, but that's where it is. On this side of the nose. And around the features, try and paint those feature edges quite accurately because it's going to help you later on down the line. Oh my goodness, that's worry. This is dark line. A wrinkle. You won't have any of those girls. You're lucky. But just you wait. Just joking. Okay, so I'm putting them in. You can see the brush strokes are sort of squarish. We're not worrying too much about the exactness of everything, but we are trying to be as accurate as possible. So it's that balance between, oh great, it's that balance between being accurate but not being fiddly. Okay, if you've got anything to say, put your hand up because we can add it to the video. I like it if we get some of your questions. If you can see where I've... So you might be going, well, why are you putting flesh tones in your hair? That's a very good question. I'm just going to do it so that I've at least got some tonal stuff going on there. Okay, that's that tone. Again, I'm just cleaning my brush here. You can also have a rag. Are you two chatting about the process or just other stuff? Yes. Okay, do you think anything you're saying might be helpful to the others? Maybe. So, do you want to say it? What was, what was your observation? You were talking about the blending in it. Like, how, how are we supposed to blend it? Like, do not blend at this stage, ever. That's a great what concern. We I don't... Talking about this stage. Like, you know the portraits ah. over there? Like, how do they... Ah. Didn't they blend it? Well, you go have a look. There's very distinct areas. So we get this optical blending. But what you might do on your portrait is between this tone and this tone that you put on as a patch, you mix a mid-tone and you paint an extra one. What happens if you blend them all is your face goes flat, completely flat. And they all went through the completely flat stage and had to repaint the contrast on. So, and it's always, that's a good question. So it's always hard to stop yourself from blending it because what you think is, but I have not got a patchy face. Okay, and so it's very hard to do it. But remember, tone is not what your skin looks like. It's the effect of light on form. Yes? So you have to trust the process. If you don't, you'll end up having to re-sort of paint it. So I've got that nice little highlight there, putting my tones in, getting a bit lost here. I think that'll do. Next tone, so now we're on to this one. And I am hoping I'm trying to get the edge of my face, the shape of my face quite accurately. And you are going to have to make adjustments um, when you paint once you've started your painting. Um, you are going to make, oh, I've dipped it into the wrong one. Oh. Anyway, as we were. I've missed out a tone here. I'm just going back one. Sorry, guys. Okay, and then 
down to the light, lightest tone. Because without the contrast, you just end up with a flat pancake face. And no one wants to look like a pancake. So you have to resist the temptation to blend and fix at this stage. Okay? Because the minute you do that, you're just going to make problems for yourself. Okay, I might. Yep. <laughs> okay, so once you've done that, then. Oh, yeah. I can get this paper. just to show you how to do it on the paper that you're going to get you're going to print on the smoother side but it is a little bit more textured than this paper i just haven't cut it yet so i'll just print on here now you want to look at your composition in my composition my figure is down in the bottom right hand side okay so i'm going to on my paper and i can draw it around i'm going to put my um, portrait. I'll just take this off so we can see what's going on. Okay, so, and you can see once you put it down, your face appearing. Now, what I would do is lift it up and see how it's printed. And it needs a bit more pressure because it's dried a bit because it was a bigger bit to do. I'm going to put it through the printing press lightly because I don't want to squish the paint around so follow me <laughs> going to show you so that you I'm just going to show you how to do it 
show you so that you don't think, I hate it, I'm not going to like this portrait, especially people like, who are the perfectionists, like Chelsea, and who like to paint in a specific way. We're going with this process. Can you just grab my portrait off the wall for me? Okay, so I'm going to start with... Yeah, thanks. You can just rip it off, don't worry. Thank you, Jess. So, obviously then you're going to go back to your reference, which is the right way around. And this is what you're using as your reference. So, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, now that I look at that, I can see that this dark shape. I haven't got enough dark paint. I should have. Okay, I'm not going to start with the dark because I haven't got enough dark paint. Let's go with the one, two, third tone, which is this one. I'm just going to put a bit of this in. So now I'm going to go, okay, above my eyebrow, this tone here. And I'm still um, for Shayla and um, Lily who are asking about this. I'm still going to be painting in these specific shapes. Okay, I'm not going to get into trying to blend things. You have to just trust me on this one, that blending at this stage is not going to serve you any good purpose. Okay, if you do blend at this stage, she said looking where she was going, then you, it's gonna re you'll really struggle to get that um, can you either share what you're saying or else respectfully listen? I don't mind if you've got something to share. I welcome it, but there's the black dot. This is on the edge here. So then you're going to start putting these extra things in. I'll put a little bit of my dark in here for my eyebrow. And I'll go in with putting my eyeball in. Okay, so you're going to slowly bring it out. Now, the reason we do this technique is because in oil painting, when Frida Kahlo was painting and she painted in oils, she would have started with what they called her transparent colours, which are colours that, well, obviously they're not opaque, so your burnt umbers, your dark blues, all those transparent colours, and she would have done almost like a tonal underpainting in umber. And then you, you, in oil paint, you work from thin, which is transparent, to fat, so that by the time you get to your white highlights or your really light highlights, you're putting them on thick paint just in the area, but in your portrait, you end up with these different thicknesses of paint. Some areas are thinner paint, more transparent, and it's only, you, you go from more general basic things to detail. So we don't start with detail. So if you, I don't want to see you painting a perfect eye, you paint the whole painting in this sort of blocky M kind of way and you trust the process and you keep it at that um, because the process is what's going to help you paint the, ooh, was it that one? Yeah, I think it was that one. No, I think I did the wrong tone, but anyway. And you're not gonna worry when you're painting the lips about getting every, little detail because we just want basic form to start with and then we're going to go into
And you, if you trust this process, you will very quickly start seeing the form come up. What questions do you have? Yes. Um, what happens when you have like lighter hair color? Well, you just, you, you know. Well, okay, well, look at. Yeah. Who's got lighter hair? Your, oh, yours is here. Look, light tones. Yeah, yeah. Just put light tones. I mean, if my. If my hair was, I mean, if you wanted to, I would just go with these tones. Mm -hmm. So let's say my hair was blonde, but I know tonally it's that color. Um, so it wouldn't matter if you have like a really light on your skin tone? Like on yeah, your so on your let's hair. say tonally, let's say I've got blonde hair and tonally my blonde hair, what's the dark tone of blonde look like? Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like a light brown. So once I've got that dark tone in there and I'm satisfied that, okay, that's my dark tone for blonde, mm -hmm. then I always wondered what I'd look like as a blonde. Then I would paint this, yes, because this is where my dark areas are. Um, maybe this is a darker area. And then if it's lighter, say I've got a lighter tone and now it's just improvisation, then I would bring my lighter tones wherever there's a lighter tone. And then eventually you'd get to your sort of really blondy lights somewhere. And you'd paint them in but you are following a tonal map and you're worrying about tone and you're not thinking about color does that make sense now does that help you yeah, yeah? so we are following our tonal map now i'm just going to stop this